Hello. What if we could turn something that's complicated and few people have any market evidence or know very much about, weighted average cost of capital? A colleague of mine used to say that weighted average cost of capital is like a big dark room. Many go in, but few come out. What if we could turn a WAC into an EBITDA multiple? That's the topic of today's valuation video. We begin with a WAC. You can read on chrismercer.net posts that talk about how to develop weighted average cost of capital, uh, but business appraisers and market participants do this all the time. We're going to begin today with a WAC of 14%. Uh, that's not an unusual WAC for a private company, but that's the beginning point. How do we turn that WAC into a an EBITDA multiple. Now this is not a valuation of any particular company, but it's a hypothetical and it's for illustration purposes only. We begin with a WAC by, based upon analysis. The long-term growth rate uh, is assumed to be 4%. That might be 2% to 5% plus or minus a little bit, but uh, in this case it's uh, 4%. Market participants, business appraisers do this all the time. Subtract that from the WAC and we get 10%. 10% is a debt-free net income or net cash flow capitalization rate. I don't know about you, but I have no frame of reference for debt-free net income or net cash flow capitalization rate. So we want to do something with it. Let's do this in three easy steps. Number one, we divide by one minus the tax rate. You've already assumed the tax rate in the development of WAC, so you've already got it. In this case, 26%. 1 minus 26% um, divided into the 10% debt-free cap rate is 13.5%. Now, that 13.5% is an EBIT, or a pre-tax, debt-free capitalization rate. Still don't know too much about that, but we can convert that in step two by dividing uh, that by 1, uh, uh, divide into one into an EBIT multiple of 7.4. Now, we're all much more familiar with an EBIT multiple than a weighted average cost of capital, but we can go one step further in step number three. We divide by what I'm going to call an EBITDA factor. Now, every company has an EBITDA factor because it is the relationship between EBITDA and EBIT. There is market evidence uh, about the EBITDA factor, and in fact, uh, I'll, I'll ref reference you to some in just a moment. But we divide the EBIT multiple by the EBITDA factor of 1.2 and we get an EBITDA multiple of 6.4. So we have converted in three easy steps a WAC of 14%, which we don't know anything about and have no market evidence, into, given the specifics of a company, of our hypothetical company here, a weighted an EBITDA multiple of 6.2. Now at least we have some frame of evidence, same frame of reference and uh, market evidence to say if that EBITDA multiple is reasonable or not. So in today's valuation video we have converted a weighted average cost of capital into an EBITDA multiple. I would reference you to uh, an article uh, in the Business Valuation Review you can link to uh, the ability to download it uh, on the blog. Uh, also uh, on the blog, I created a little card to show this method to make it just easy to remember. You can uh, print that off or download it and uh, at chrismercer.net. If you have found this to be interesting, I hope you'll comment. Uh, if you have questions, I hope you'll raise them at chrismercer.net. Look forward to the conversation. Uh, until the next valuation video, good day.